Hi guys, Dean here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Accidental Death of an Anarchist by Dario Fo. This is in a new translation by Simon uh, Nye. This was actually performed at Wickham Art Centre, and that's actually where I got this 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 copy. It was uh, lying around in the office. They had a bunch of copies. So I thought I would uh, give it a read. So I've tabbed out some parts that I want to talk to you about. I'm going to read you the blurb as well. Then we're going to check out the tabs and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. Dario Fo's classic farce, Accidental Death of an Anarchist, was a sensation when it premiered in Italy in 1970. Based on the story of a political activist who fell to his death from the window of a police station, the original production was seen by over half a million people. This incisive satire on police corruption, media manipulation and political shenanigans is here translated by Simon Nye. This version of Accidental Death of an Anarchist premiered at the Donmar Warehouse London in February 2003. And uh, I like the fact straight away it's got the initial uh, cast list here and Ree Siffens was in it as Maniac and it's the perfect role for him as well. Uh, so yeah, it says uh, the, uh, it was first performed on 20th of February 2003, the cast was Desmond Barrett as Bertozzo, Rhys Ifans as Maniac, Cornelius Booth as Constable, uh, Paul Ritter as Inspector, Gary Waldhorn as Superintendent, and Emma Amos as Journalist. And it was directed by Robert Delamere. So uh, Maniac's got this little bit here, and he talks about getting a grant from the Arts Council, which I have successfully managed to get one for Wickham Arts Centre, so I, I know what that's all about, that process. But uh, yeah, he says, Maniac here, he says, Yes, if I were a sane person, but I'm mad. I have a certificate. It's all there on my medical records. I've been admitted 16 times with what's called acting mania. It's more of a hobby, really, playing other people. I'll do anybody. But the thing is, I'm a huge fan of the theatre of life, so my fellow actors have to be real people who don't know they're acting. Which is just as well, because I'm a bit short of funds, so I can't pay them. I asked the Arts Council for a grant, but I don't know anyone who's anyone, you see, so... And Maniac, he says, uh, I'll type if you like, I'm a qualified typist, 45 words per minute, which is not very fast. So uh, this little exchange we have is quite amusing. Uh, Maniac says, look, do you mind if I say this? I feel I sort of know you from somewhere. You weren't connected with the supply of freelance troops in Africa in the late 70s and 80s, were you, by any chance? And the superintendent, he goes, S supply of troops? No, what am I saying? A senior policeman with a secret. Hardly. Right, back to business. Still relevant today. Uh, this great quote by the inspector who says, The world is a bastard. And then Maniac replies, No, the government's the bastard. And then they talk about um, singing an, a popular anarchist song. And then it says, He brings out a lyric sheet for everyone to read, then wraps the words to Don't Believe the Hype by Public Enemy. Alone at first, then persuading the reluctant policeman to join in. So, I mean, considering the original was published in 1970, you know. <laughs> so I wonder what the original instruction was there. We have a, an unpleasant word beginning beginning with R to uh, describe people with learning difficulties. And then later on Maniac uh, changes his role and he's playing something else. It says he is now wearing a false moustache, a black patch over one eye and one brown glove. The superintendent stops, lost for words. The Maniac decides to introduce himself. Captain Mark Weenie from Forensic. Please excuse my stiff hand, it's wooden, a souvenir of the Gulf War. Say what you like about Johnny Iraqi. He knows how to whip off a hand. Please have a seat. Again, in 1970 it would be pre Gulf War, so I wonder which war was in the original uh, translation of it. We get this bit where it uh, breaks the fourth wall deliberately, so uh, the superintendent says, I'm delighted to reveal that we have, yes, lots of undercover agents pretty much everywhere. The journalist says, Now I know you're bluffing, superintendent. Not at all. In tonight's audience, for example, we have a few of our people in. Do you want to see? He claps his hands. Voices are heard from various points in the auditorium. Superintendent, over here, sir. Yes, sir. The maniac laughs and turns to the audience. Don't be alarmed, they're actors. The real undercover ones are trained to sit quietly. And we get this conversation between the journalist and maniac. In other words, if there were no scandals, they'd have to invent them because they act like lightning conductors, the way they focus and neutralize the public's dissatisfaction. Exactly. Tensions massaged away through the miracle of catharsis, and you journalists are the overindulged chief masseuses. Indulged? Tell that to the government. Have you seen it rushing around desperately trying to suppress our stories? Oh, it only ever pretends to. They all get out, don't they? Cash for questions, donations for passports, cemeteries for a quid, guns to Iraq, MPs caught with their adulterous cocks out while urging restraint and probity, 18 Jeffrey Archer scandals, 
Another 32 ending with the word gate. Did the state crumble? Did the stock exchange collapse? On the contrary, they went from strength to strength. People thought, okay, something stinks here, but we brought it to the surface. We're swimming in it and even drinking some of it, but nobody's trying to pretend it doesn't exist. So that's all right then. So I just like this little bit of dialogue here. So the superintendent goes, no, an art teacher on definite sick leave. Suffers from paranoid delusions, so he's mad. Oh, didn't I mention that? Has spent time in psychiatric hospitals in Broadsmoor, the Maudsley, Stavanger. Looks like he's given them all a go. And the maniac goes, yep, I've done the grand tour for the mentally disturbed. And then the journalist says, 15 electric shock treatments in solitary for 20 days, three incidents of criminal damage. Oh, he's a pyromaniac, 10 arson attacks. Let's have a look. Burned down the library in Alexandria, Egypt in the second century BC. Get that here. He's written that himself, look. So he can add forger to hoaxer, imposter, quick change artist. So yeah, I mean, it's a farce. So you're not gonna like it if you don't like farces, I guess. Fortunately, I do when they're done well, and this was very amusing. Um, I mean, I'd almost compare it to something like Spike Milligan or something like that in, uh, in terms of a lot of like the humor and stuff in this. It was quite dry, quite British feeling humor, even though it was translated from Italian. Maybe Simon Nye had more of an impact on the uh, jokes and stuff and the narrative than he should have done. I don't know, it did feel like that sometimes when it was mentioning stuff that like Dario Fo couldn't possibly have known. But overall, I did still enjoy it. I'm sad I didn't get to see the production of it. I gave it a four out of five. So we have it, that's what I made of Accidental Death of an Anarchist by Dario Fo. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.